Welcome, 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 man. This is Come On Now, the podcast y'all rocking with Nick on another edition of Point Guard Perspective because it is basketball season still in the WNBA, and we have an instant reaction from the Indiana Fever Las Vegas Aces game. And what do I come away with that game from? First of freaking all, holy cow. Holy mother freaking cow. Let's start off with Kathy Engelbert, the commissioner of the WNBA, of the WNBA, the W. She needs to get her hound dogs in freaking check. She needs to put them back on the leech. This is, this is, this is outrageous, man. This is the third time now, or fourth time now that Caitlin Clark, the main draw of this league, who we have come to see, who who we who has brought the new viewers to this league, she gets another technical for showing simple reaction for being mad at herself for getting a foul. She goes behind the goalpost and she slaps the padding. Nobody cares about that referee. Stop trying to make yourself the biggest draw of the game. You're not. 22 is. That's why we're here. We're here to see Caitlin Clark and the rest of the WNBA players. Now, if y'all don't have the wherewithal, the awareness to understand that she is the main draw, and now she has her sixth technical foul of the season, one more, and she's suspended, what are we doing here? How do y'all not understand this? Like the WNBA, y'all keep taking L after L after L with marketing, with not making the right decisions, scheduling games at 12 o'clock p.m. on a freaking Thursday, all these things that's been going on. But now, (laughs) I guess there's no stopping to it. Y'all just don't understand what y'all have here, the gold mine that y'all have here, and y'all keep blowing it. I'm sick of it. I'm, I'm, I'm... Holy cow, that's the only thing I can freaking say. I'm sick of it. She gets another technical for a a simple reaction where you're, by now, the league offices, y'all should be talking to your your referees by now and saying, hey, understand the magnitude of what we have here. We have to, I'm not saying show her favoritism, but we have to extend the rope for her just a little bit longer than anybody else when it comes to these technical files. This, this one should be rescinded. The last one should have been rescinded. Like, it's simple emotions of a basketball game. She's not showing you up, referee. She's not doing that in the moment. If she's not showing you up, she's not in your face, she's not being vulgar, she's out there showing her own emotions away from the play, why are we, we calling technical fouls? This is this is continuous problem that keeps happening. And that's what we have to, we have to fix. Referees, we are not here to see y'all. Y'all are not the main attraction. This is not uh, uh, who has the biggest endowment show right now, where we have to pull it that, pull it out, and put it on the table and show it that we that we are the people that that control the game. We get it, y'all make the decision, we y'all make the calls. But for y'all not to understand what's going on, do y'all not want a job next year? Do y'all not want this league to be around? Because that's what y'all keep showing me. Y'all are showing me that y'all don't care about y'all jobs. Y'all don't want y'all jobs. Y'all don't want this league to be around because y'all keep doing stupidity after stupidity after stu- stupidity when it comes to this young lady. She single-handedly brought attention to this league. It's a Friday night. I live in Miami. I could be anywhere in the world right now. Well, anywhere in Miami right now, partying, happy hour, having the time of my life. But instead, on a Friday night, I'm watching WNBA. I'm locked in. This would have never happened any other time in my life because I wouldn't have cared. But y'all got Indiana Fever playing on on a Friday night, and they happen to be playing against the best player in the league, Asia Wilson, and the, the next up-and-coming best player in the league is on the court, who's spectacular. So I'm tuned in. I'm watching. We are all watching. But this is a travesty. 
<laughs> what y'all are doing to this player? Like, what are y'all trying to show her that she's a rookie and she can't come in and, and show emotions or, or upstage y'all? She's not trying to because she's doing it on the side. Now, granted, she does cry. You know, she's doing a lot of begging and, and, and you know, coming into the referee faces and not referee faces, but she's whining a lot. And I get that. But that has nothing to do. This ain't that. And that ain't this. That has nothing to do with these outrageous technical fouls that y'all are calling on this young lady. Stop it. Cut it out. Stop it now. Please. What are y'all doing? Do y'all not want us to watch this league? Do y'all want us to leave? Do y'all want us to take, in, our, in the words of, of my guy Ben, take our ball and go home? Because we can do that. We can do that. We can stop supporting this league. We can stop watching. Y'all keep pushing us, and we will. But let's dive into this game. 78-74, the Fever lose another game to the Aces. Back-to-back -back losses to this team. Back-to-back, -back, they have chances come down to the end of the game. They fight back in the game, and they don't find a way to pull it up. And it starts with Caitlin early in the game. She had a horrendous first half, 0 for, 0 for, but she had seven assists. She breaks the record, all-time assists in the season. Kudos to her. That's an amazing accomplishment. Um, and this is her first year. This is a rookie year, and this is what she's doing. She's, that's, that's phenomenal, man. Because nobody would have thought that. Early in the year, started off a little sluggish, averaging five assists, five and a half. And, and all the naysayers were like, look, I told you she wasn't that good. And she was averaging about five turnovers. But now she's averaging about nine, ten assists a game since that point. You know. And she's everything that we expected her to be at this moment. And, and it's bringing us here. And it's just an amazing accomplishment that she did. Shout out to her. But end of the day, she had a horrendous first half. It looked like the Las Vegas Aces are just giving her problems the past two games. But the second half, she turns it around. She gets it going in the third quarter. Kelsey Mitchell, outstanding in the first half. She keeps them in the game. This is going to be a compliment to her. But since Kobe Bryant, I'm going to put her up there with Kobe being Bryant. She is the worst shot taker maker in the league she takes the worst shots but she's making them and she she's able to make tough difficult shots look relatively easy but she has an amazing first half she keeps them going when 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 cc is struggling she drops 19 points in the first half and she keeps them in the game they're down eight at halftime um melissa smith her confidence is shot right now man and you can tell because she's going to the free throw line and she's shooting it with no confidence. She's four for 14 the last three, four games from the free throw line. That shows you a player who's hearing everybody talk about her, who's who's hearing the media, who's hearing, you know, going on the social network. And she's seeing Rudy Rance every day. Rudy, she see Ben. She see them out there. She see them talking about her. She should never be on the court. Y'all, She's watching. Because you can see it affecting the way she's playing. She can't block it out, and she's going to the free throw line, and she can't make it. She can't make layups. She's she's notoriously bad on defense. And you can see even Christy Sides is finally starting to give up on her. Finally, she's starting to say, hey, we got to go a different route. And they got a, a big spark from Dantes today. She came in. She hit three, a jump shot, you know, a shot off the glass, you know, 16 minutes. She got some meaningful minutes at the end of the game. She earned it. Um, she made big shots, kept them in the game a little bit. But end of the day, this ride, this roller coaster, this team, it goes as far as Caitlin takes them. And that's a lot to ask for a rookie, but they need her to be outstanding damn near every night for them to be a good team. It's just simple as that. And after that first half, Caitlin comes out. She roars. <laughs> she roars. She she gives she gives the, the aces everything that, that he, they can handle at the moment. 14 points, big three, big shot, big shot. You know, come back, tie the game. And you know how Caitlin gets when she feel that momentum. She got the crowd, the fever crowd. They, they pumping her up, and she comes down. She takes a step back three. Um, I think she should just run the offense a little bit more in those situations, but I understand her adrenaline is going. She's feeling good. She just want to keep the the crowd in it. She wants the she wants the whole arena to just come down at the moment. But some of these shots, 
from 30 feet, 35 feet in those moments are, are critical. And, and I'm not going to say that they're hurting the team, but run the offense a little more and see if we can get something better. Let's see if we can take the lead in those moments and see where the game goes from there. Um, ultimately, the game came down to CC. You know, they needed her to be a superhero again in the second half. She almost pulled it off. But when your team is 11 from t- for 20 at the free throw line, it's not going to get it done. CC, she missed two. LC, she, mi- she missed two back to back. I, I, I thought I lost my mind. Um, Kelsey go up there. She missed a couple. Um, Timmy, she misses she misses some. Melissa misses some. And it's just a, a snowball effect for the, for the rest of the night. 11 for 20, that's nine points at the free throw line. They lose by four. The game came down to the end. You make four, five, six of those, you have a win this game. And, it's, and it changes the whole, you know, how they feel about playing the Aces if they do happen to run into them, run into them in the playoffs. Because right now the Aces are showing that they're just, just a team that's that's been there before. You know, two championships. They know how to find a way to win in big moments in in, in the game, and that's what showed again tonight. Um, we get the game down to two points in the fourth, with one seventeen left. Caitlin shoots a thirty five footer against. I think Asia steps out there. Is that the best shot in that moment? I don't think so, because. When they actually did, you know, she sets the ball screen. They actually get some good action out of it. You know, between her, Boston doing a little short roll, or Kelsey on the backside of it, you know, and then she gets an open shot. Or you get Hall to get an open shot, even though she only shot two shots tonight, 35 minutes. That's what she's going to be because she's not a playmaker to go out there and get her own shot. She's, she relies on Caitlin and, and Boston and – and Mitchell to provide for her to get her some open shots. If they do get her that, she shows that she's going to knock it down. But Caitlin comes down at that very moment. They're down two. There's a minute 17 in the game, and it's it's pretty much early in the shot clock, and she jacks it up. I, I just want in that moment. I So I can't be too hard on her or too critical because early in the season, you know what I said? I said, hey, in these moments later on in the game, she's been deferring to – to Kelsey or deferring to Boston. And she wasn't stepping up in those big moments when they needed her to take shots. And I want her to be the big dog, the alpha dog in those moments. And we want to rely on her to the ball in her hands to make the right decision to make the, or take the shot, even force a couple. I, I, I get it. But in that moment of that, in that part of the game, I need her to understand how critical this possession is and get us a good shot. You know, you could do a little, you know, you got the switch. You could do a little bit, you know, dribbling and, and do your moves and get into your other your, your step back that you feel real comfortable with. But the one from the left side of the court, 35 feet out, that's just a tough shot. I, can she make it? Of course. But are there better shots? I, I, it, there, there are better shots. And then we come down to the end of the game. Um, right after that possession, the aces go down. Jackie Young, she goes in a pick and roll situation. I don't know how Lexi Hall, um, and I think Dantes was in that situation, handled that pick and roll situation. She blows by him. Kelsey Mitchell, she she can't come and help in that situation. And Kelsey has been known to do little things defensively that I just don't agree with. She's so damn fast, but she gets herself out of the play. In that moment, you don't get – Kelsey's shooting the ball pretty well that night. I mean, she had – like three threes. I want to say she shot it well. She shot four of 11 from threes today. Um, in that moment, you can't help. Short corner three, you cannot help in that moment. You jab. You give Jackie Young a little moment to think about it. You know, what decision does she make? Does she go to the basket? Maybe you jab as you slow her down a little bit, and Lexi Hall is able to get back into play. But to completely leave her and give up that three-point shot, you cannot do that in that moment. And it, Kelsey Plum made him pay, and she made him pay in the biggest moment of that game. Put him up five. Indiana comes back. Dantes had a big game. I think you 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 bench Smith at this moment, at this point of the season, how she's playing, her confidence. You might lose her for the rest of the season. I don't know because you might need her later on, but she might be lost. But that's the risk you have to take at this moment of the season. 
You either go with Tammy or you go with Dantes. Tammy for defensive purposes, Dantes because she stretched the floor. You know, she gives you a little bit of post presence. But right now, Nalissa Smith, she has to get out the lineup, and you go with a seven-man rotation. You go with one of those bigs as a starter. The other one comes off the bench, and you go with Willa because Willa's been playing pretty good. I, I, I have no problem with her when she comes in the game. She gets she gets CC off the ball a little bit, and she hasn't been doing too much. I think early in the season she was trying to do too much because she still had that mentality of, um, you know, I'm still a great, great to good ball player. I played a lot of minutes last year. When I come in, I, I got to make something happen. And I think lately she's been more calm and say just taking it when she gets her opportunity to open threes, a drive to the you know to the lane and get a layup. She hasn't been forcing it. So you roll with those seven players off the bench. You would like to have eight when you get to the playoffs. I don't know who that eight person would be. Maybe you say just f that and you just roll with seven. Now foul trouble happens. You you have to be a coach and you make you know some decisions. Even though you know Christy size is Christy size, we can leave that at that. Um, but they get to the stop. They get to the stop. Um, after Dantes hits hits a big shot, they come back. I would like the ball in CC hand, but I get it. Kelsey Mitchell's a, like I said, she's the best. Worst shot taker maker in I ever seen since Kobe Bryant. She comes off the screen, great screen by Boston. Uh, Agent Wilson, she she comes up, she leaves Boston wide open. Kelsey makes the right play. Now, do I want Boston shooting it all the time as a twenty nine percent three point shooter for the season? No, but as wide open, short corner, I will live with it in that situation. I would love CC to touch the ball. You have to get the best player on the team to touch the ball. But I get it. We get a good shot at that situation. Um, Rudy disagrees. He thinks that Kelsey has to make Asia step up or make a play. She has to attack her. I think she made a great play in that moment. She kicks it out to Boston. It's a make or miss lead. She missed it. She shot 4-10 last year, 40%. 7-24 this year, 29%. Short corner, though, that's the difference. It's not deep, not in the middle where you're shooting a deeper shot. Short corner, I live with it wide open. She misses, ball game. You lose two crucial games to the Aces. You had a chance to close it. Um, first for CC, for, you know, individual purposes. She actually, she win those two games. She had two big games. Now you're looking at the MVP race. Maybe slightly different, even though Asia's been – Downright terrific this year. Wasn't so great tonight. Mediocre night. Um, what she was, 6 for 15, 15 points, 17 boards. She's been kept in check this past two games percentage-wise. But you cannot have Chelsea Gray go for 21 points. She's getting back into her groove. You can see she's she's feeling herself. She's 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 in the zone. She's She's been a little bit more aggressive. And our love for us, Christy Sides, if we do see them in the playoffs, you put her in a one and three, one and three pick and roll all game, and you get that switch and you make her defend. But for right now, I get it. Okay, she's been playing better. She had a great game tonight, 21 points, um, big layups, big three-point shots. But the fever had a chance. Nine, 11 for 20 from the free throw line, not going to get it done. Nalissa Smith, confidence, I think she was a minus nine, not going to get it done. Kelsey Mitchell, minus 10, I don't know how, but um, – we have to make that change. Nalissa Smith has to – we have to substitute her. Um, Like I said, confidence gone. Ain't getting much out of her. Katie Lou didn't play. I don't have a problem with that. You roll with those seven players, and that's what you roll with going into the playoffs. And this team make a run. I think they're a year away, to be honest with y'all. I think they're a year away. I think they're like the thunder that year that they lost to the Lakers. They still had young Westbrook, young KD, um, young Harden, and they go against Kobe, Artest, Gasol, the vets. And I think that's sort of what will happen this year in the playoffs. But I think they'll make it hella interesting. Nobody wants to play them. They're up and down. You know, I think the Aces found a way to slow them down a little bit. Um, I thought it would be up and down for these two teams that are usually up and down. But the Aces, these past couple games, has found a way to keep – CC under control on these breaks. Keep the team from getting everybody else going like Lexi Hall. Kudos to them. Um, but third quarter, fourth quarter, 
You know, you're down three, you're going to start the quarter. And we get five points from the whole offense going into three and a half minutes in the quarter left. Got to be better than that if you want to beat these type of teams. I think they find a way to to make it interesting in the playoffs. But damn referees, y'all 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 are blowing this, man. I'm I'm sick of that, man. Fix it, fix it now. Kathy Engelbert, talk to your hounds, put them on a leash, fix it. We're sick of this. Fix it, fix it, fix it now. Damn best player in the league, and y'all just finding a way to damn keep her off the court or give her a damn suspension coming up eventually. It's bullshit. Fix it. End of the day, man, they don't get it done. Tough loss. On to the next one, guys. That's that's all I got, man. Um, like I said, it was an instant recap, man. Appreciate y'all, man. Y'all keep subscribing. Hit that subscribe button. We keep bringing y'all content. This is an instant reaction. This is a point guard perspective from Nick, former D1 basketball player. I like to dive in. I like to break it down a little bit. Um, I'm sure Rudy's gonna come on and dive in. He's right now, he's at the uh he's at the BKFC um boxing match. I mean not the boxing match, but the, the, the match tonight. He actually got some immediate access. So he's there. He's he's I'm pretty sure he's gonna report on that. But that's a big thing for our podcast as we continue to grow. Um thank you for y'all support. Keep keep subscribing. We're trying to get to 5k. We're not too far off. Um, and then 10K would be the goal, 20K, 30. But appreciate y'all. Um, thank y'all. I'm out. That's all I got. Have a good one, man. Still recording? Oh, shoot.